Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 181 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to make this stack of letters, and this stack of letters, I learned this from Sonia Stepto a long time ago, and um, it is a little storage box. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this, and I just pulled out, I pulled out some old envelopes from, you know, like Father's Day and Mother's Day and Christmas, whatever. I just grabbed some old envelopes that I had, and um, then I also stole a few envelopes out of the cards that we bought for Christmas because we used more than one card to make the puff up, so we have a few extra envelopes in there. And, um, and then also, if you don't have any old envelopes, you don't have any um, spare envelopes, you can also use you know, just the regular business type envelopes. Um, and, or you can just make your own. I'm just going to make a really quick, easy envelope. And what I'm going to do, I think I want the brighter color. This is just a piece of my hand painted paper. And so I'm just going to make myself a square. And because this envelope is not going to really be used like as an envelope, I'm not specifically worried about, you know, whether it's perfect or not. And so what I'm gonna do is, so I made myself a square. I know where my middle is, because that's where the fold is. So I'm just gonna take the bottom part, not this to be the bottom part, I guess it really doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna just take the bottom part and fold that. Now if you wanna know right where your center is, you can also just put a little bit of a fold there. All right, so now I know that here is the center of my envelope. I'm gonna fold this little flap right up, just past the center here, right in the middle there, and just fold it over. I'm gonna take this side, and I'm gonna go, oh, that's probably a half an inch or so past center there. I'm gonna to come to this other side and do the same thing. Go here center, about a half inch or so past there. So there we go. And then I'm just going to take my top and fold it down to the size I want it. Now I've already got one handmade envelope here. And so they're about the same width, but I want this one to be just a touch smaller. So I'm going to put that one right there. And I'm gonna fold this one down to right about there, so that's a little bit smaller. So just like that. And then what I'm gonna do, just so that I don't have all the bulk, just like any other handmade envelope, I'm gonna come in and just cut out these little extra triangles here that just make it a little bit bulky. Especially if you're gonna make a whole stack of envelopes, this is going to make it bulky just on the corners, and you don't want your corners to be bulkier than everything else. It may not sit as nice. I don't know, I did, I've did. i never made a whole stack with bulky corners, but that's just my thought. So we just cut these corners off, just like that. And then just fold these over and fold this up. I'm just going to put some glue here and put some glue here and some glue on the tip. Now if your tip sticks up past here, um, then don't put glue on your tip. And then because I folded this one down extra far, it sticks out a little bit, so all I'm gonna do is just round that off. It really doesn't make a difference because you're not really gonna see this anyways. But just for my own personal, there we go. This is gonna be our top envelope, and I'm gonna set this one aside because the top envelope is going to be just a touch different than all the rest because the rest are all going to have a hole in them. So I'm going to set that one aside and pick your favorite envelope to be on the top because it's the one that 
is going to be seen. So if you're making your own envelopes or you have a favorite color or whatever, and I stack them in order of size. Now, we need bulk in these envelopes. Originally, when I did this one, I stuffed it with paper, and I believe it was newspaper. And so I just cut newspaper to that size and put it in there. Then I was talking to someone else that made one. Oh, and I forget her name. Darn it. She sent me a beautiful picture. She made a beautiful one. It was just very shabby chic, lacy, pretty. And, um, and she said she put chipboard in hers. And when she said chipboard, I thought of cardboard because cardboard's even thicker than chipboard. So I just went out and grabbed a bunch of pieces of cardboard that I could put in my envelopes. How easy is that? You get a nice fat envelope really quickly. So just take your envelope, get all of the other stuff out of your way, and first thing I'm going to do is just cut this flap off. You don't actually have to cut the flaps off. It doesn't matter if there's a flap inside, but for me, watch your fingers. Well, and I'm not doing this. Oh, okay. Be very careful. Take your time. Get that out of there. I'm going to put the envelope up here. And I want it to be a little smaller than the envelope because remember, it's bulky, so it's going to take up room just by the way that it expands your envelope. So I'm going to make it a little bit shorter there. And then, there's my pencil. I'm going to make a mark, make it a little bit shorter here and a little bit shorter here and here and they don't have to be absolutely perfect as far as your lines go because you're not going to see them anyways so if you're a little bit crooked that's okay be very careful And there we go. Now, if you don't have any cardboard around right now, you can always use newspaper, use old junky papers that you have that you you don't like, stuff it with whatever you have to stuff it with. And then with these ones, you do want to seal them. And it doesn't matter if they're perfect or not. The only one that you want to possibly be the nicest one on the bottom because if someone were to flip it over you would see that but if you have one that's not nice on the bottom just cover it with another piece of paper put a piece of paper on the bottom when you're done so there we go doesn't matter what's on the front at all because those are going to be covered up as you stack them so those are going to be gone and then I wanted to show you like these four envelopes are all the same size and you know I mean it looks cool from the side but you know, it's like, you know, they're all the same size, so they cover each other up. So I thought what I would do is, this one I just cut my cardboard a little bit short on accident. And then I thought, well, what the heck? I'm going to fold this all the way down to there. It's going to be the same length as all the rest, but it's going to be just a touch shorter. So I'm just going to do that, and now instead of it being the same size as all the rest, now it's a little bit of a different size. So, and then I just have some more here. Also, <clears throat> I did the white ones. I took a couple of those white ones out of our Christmas cards, but I didn't want a stack of all white envelopes. So what did I do? I just colored the edges. Coloring the edges, you don't need to do the whole thing because again, they're gonna be covered up, they're gonna be stacked up, so you will only see the outside edge. So I just did here, and then I did make sure that I did the edge here so that it wasn't as white, because that's what you're gonna see the most. Once you get a stack that is as tall as you think you're going to want it, 
then you're going to need to decide how big your hole is going to be. Now, if you want a bigger hole, you don't want small envelopes because the hole has to be smaller than the smallest envelope that you have, which is this one. So the hole has to be smaller than this. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to use this to cut a template. Okay, so that is smaller. So if I just, it's smaller side to side, so if I just say, like, maybe cut it right about here. And that is, well, let's do that. See, I can see the line in the corrugation. just going to cut a template this also you could use um chipboard I use usually use chipboard for templates but I didn't bring any chipboard over here so which chipboard is you can buy it at the store it's called chipboard but also it's just a cereal box or a macaroni box or whatever that's chipboard all right so if I cut a hole that's that size this envelope will fit over the top of it so I'm going to set this envelope aside because that's our top envelope and then I'm just going to just come on here. You can do this one of two ways. You can just cut a hole in every one, the same size like this. And then once you get all of the holes cut, this hole's here. Maybe this hole was a little off center. So all you're going to do is then line your holes up where you cut them very randomly and your envelopes then will be just wherever that hole is is exactly where your envelope will have to be if you put this one over here you know then you'd have to move that over there like that so or you can cut them you're going to cut them one at a time anyways but you can cut them one at a time and then um set it on top of the next one where you want it to set and draw inside the lines And then you will have to remember, if you draw inside the box, to cut just outside those lines a little bit so that your hole doesn't get smaller, smaller, smaller with every single envelope. Because whenever you use a template, if you don't use exactly the same one, then you will, if you, if you continue to move from one envelope to the next to the next to the next each time if you cut on those lines it will get just a touch smaller and I am not paying any attention to where my lines are so I'm gonna have to recut all of the corners I don't think I'm gonna need that though Make sure that your corners are cut through nicely. And don't cut off the edge. The smaller your envelope, the closer to the edge you're going to be as those as we get to the bigger ones, it'll be not so close to the edge. I've got a spot here that's not cut. See right here, I've got a spot that's not cut. And here, whoops. Might be easier to flip it over to see where you're cut and where you're not. So there we go. Now you've got a couple pieces of paper that you can use for collage, you can use for ATC cards or something, and again, cardboard that you can use for something else. So, and now, when you cut them, you're probably going to have some spot or another that is going to come apart. 
because I had just put glue on my envelopes, you know, where they come together. So up here it's coming apart. And a little bit right here. And there we go. So that's our top envelope. This one is going to sit on top of here. And then it's going to open up like that. Except the flap won't be there, but I was just holding it there. So that is our top envelope. It is covering that hole. So now we just need to go through each one of our envelopes. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can stack them all up at the bottom like this. And so it looks like that. You can center them all. Like that. Or you can offset them just a little bit. So that you see a little bit more of what's there. And just decide how you want it to look when you're done. Kind of stack them up that way. And then just go ahead and draw around the inside of this and then cut around that hole. And we're just going to do this for the whole stack until we get to the bottom. And remember, stay right at the edge, out, the edge outside of that line so that this hole does not get any smaller than the one before it. And then once we get them all cut, we will decorate them any way we might want to decorate them. There's not a lot of decorating to this, but if you want to put a stamp on each one, or you know, you don't need to put an address on each one. Obviously, you won't even have a place to put the address. But if you want to put a stamp, if you want to put a return address label, you know, something to make them look more like they really were just letters that you received in the mail. And, you know, it's just a stack of letters. Then you might want to put a stamp on the corner of each one. Maybe a return address label or just even a return address. Handwritten would look really cute. So there we go. This one is sealed up well, so I don't have to reseal it. Again, I'm going to take my extras and put them there. So that one's going to be like that. This one is going to be like this. And I'm going to bring my stack back over here. Oops, I just moved it around. And here's the point. If they move around a little bit, if you really had a stack of envelopes sitting there, they may not be perfect. You know, they're going to get bumped. They're going to get moved. And so... If you got it just how you wanted it and then the pile moved, um, don't be disappointed. Just go with it. So I'm going to put that one on there. I don't need that on there anymore. And draw around it. And I'm going to cut that one out. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the next one and the next one. Remember, don't cut the last one. If you cut the last one, just make another envelope and make it the bottom. If you cut the last one and you don't have another envelope, take a piece of chipboard, cover it with a piece of scrapbooking paper, and put it on the bottom, or a piece of cardboard. Um, you know, so it, it's not going to be a huge deal if you forget, but you could always take the last one and put it with the first one and set those aside so that you know they don't need to be cut. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut all of these, and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I pulled out some of our handmade stamps here for our postage, and then all of them are cut all the way to the bottom. We have our top one also, and I have just went ahead and just put some little addresses on there, return addresses, and so I thought that um, we need to have some stamps on these, and I have our little ephemera storage that we made with our sewing machine. And I have some stamps that I bought, but I also have little stamps that I made. I um, I got a, I'm just going to pull some out here. Um, I got a stamp book. 
and in that stamp book there's lots of stamps and so all I did was just cut out the little stamps and then I just colored them with some shiny um, paint and so we're going to put some of these on our envelope and we'll just use stick glue to do that but um just kind of find one that we like and put one on each envelope and then I also have the ones that that I made where we used the little perforator from the sewing machine that is not something we have bought for our stash and you don't have to have it you can just use a needle to do the perforations so I have a few stamps here too that I've done and I thought that I might pick a few of those but only for the bigger envelopes because the bigger envelopes you know these would fit on but they're a little bit large for this little tiny envelope to me now that's not necessarily true and I'm gonna leave some of the perforations there but get rid of a little bit of the extra straighten up the bottom so this one will put on and grab a piece of cardboard here and put this on one of the bigger ones on the bottom so we just go through and put some stamps on there and when I cut my envelopes I put a little arrow on them to show me what side was up because once I got them cut I didn't know which side was up and really doesn't make a difference but just kind of you know for for my sake I did it that way so I'm gonna put that one on there even though I'm gonna have to cut a little bit of that off after I put it on there I'll let it dry for a second before I cut it off, but I'll put it up close to the edge there. And get all of all of them stamped. And then once we get them all stamped, we'll just use our little homemade cancellation stamp to cancel them. And you don't have to do this part. You can put that on there if you want to. If you don't want to have that on there, you don't have to. And I'm going to put it flat. Hopefully I won't make a mess of this. I'm going to do it on one of the... I'll do it on this one first. I really got a whole ton of ink down here that I definitely don't need. And so let's just kind of put that up there like that. And there we go. We've got that. I'm going to wipe this little bit off the bottom. because I don't want a great big old smucky mark on my front envelope. But we'll put that aside. Just give it a press where the string is. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, if this doesn't come out perfect, it doesn't really matter because postmarks never are perfect. So. I'm going to go through and I'm going to stamp every one of these envelopes. I'm going to, to put a cancellation mark on them. And then I'm also going to, on the front one here, I thought that I, because I haven't decided what I want on the front. I may want to leave the front. I might want to put myself as the return address and the person I'm going to give this to or, or sell it to or whatever, put their name here. Um, I may want to leave them blank so whoever gets it can fill that in on their own. Um, the others that I put on there were just fake names and just, well, they weren't really fake because I put like Bugs Bunny and Betty Boop and, you know, just for fun. I was in that kind of a mood this morning. But I do want to stamp some lines on here. I'm not going to stamp lines there, but just right here. And I have to decide, I was thinking about using just the address part of my postage stamp or just three lines off of my line stamp and I'm just really not sure which way I want to go and I'm going to do them in brown because I just think that would look nicer with the colors of that and not as stark as the as the black but this one has the I think I think we'll try this I'm just going to use the brown Hampton ink that we bought and just put it on these lines. I don't want the extra around the edge or the stamp part or anything. 
and I'm hoping that this will come out neat because being the top envelope I would like it to be neat also the thing is if it's not it's the top envelope I'm doing all of this before I put them together so that way if okay so it's right about here right up to here where do I want it? I think maybe, well, we're gonna just try that right there. And hopefully that turns out nice. And because it's made with the twine, it will be light. It's not gonna be like super, hopefully not super in your face. Yes, I like that. I think that that turned out really good. I just wanted something there to take the place of that center section, you know, where you can write the name and it's not just totally blank. So I like the way that that turned out. Now, do I want to maybe put some, maybe I will put some lines up here and I'll just use the line stamp for that and just do the top three lines. And just put those right about there. Oh, I think it's crooked. But if it's crooked, it's crooked. There we go. Not too bad. So there. So that's going to be my front one because I haven't decided how I want to do that. But I did want it to look nice right from the start. So if you have any where your stamps are hanging over, once you let them dry a little bit, just go in and nip them off. go and so there's our little stamp on there even though that stamp is not going to this one is going to line up right here so that stamp's not going to show up much at all but just so that it didn't wasn't just plain old brown I put something or I wanted something on there anyways even just a little bit of a name on there so that you know it looks like it's still an envelope if you can see how that looks like that so I'm gonna stamp all of them and um, and get them canceled and then I will be right back okay so I have them all stamped and I have the cancellation marks on them I wanted to say don't forget when you're done doing what you're doing this was I was all done I got all of these stamps I got all of these images off of the stamp off from my stamp so those will be cool to play with so don't forget um, you know when you're done doing what you're doing stamp off on something else and if you just have a big sheet of paper that you can stamp off on whenever you're done using your stamps you'll wind up with a really cool sheet of paper so I just kind of wanted to remind you of that so they're all stamped and um, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue them together and we are just going to I'm going to kind of put a couple on here to decide how I want. Okay, these two are going like this. So that bottom one, a hair on there. So if those are going to go like that, do I want that like that? I think I'm going to do it about like that. Okay, so that is where, and just keep them in order um, because you've, you know, you've kind of, um, let's see if I put it like that. I don't want anything on the corners because they're going to stick out. But we want to get it nice up to the edge. And then we can kind of take it right out to the edge here. We just don't want anything around the corners because we, they're going to stick off up to the edge out here and it's not something that's going to be <clears throat> now how did I have that like that I think so that's how it's going to go because I already set it down okay so we're going to set it like that and this will be covered so we don't have to worry about that and also um, I don't worry about gluing each one of these down except for not the very top solid one, but the next one. This one, we do kind of want to glue this edge down. So we'll do that too. 
but then you're just going to line them up. And again, just barely the little corners is what we don't need glue on. And I think I really kind of overdid that last glue. It didn't need to be that much glue. And then just keep lining them up, lining your squares up until you get them all glued together. Then once you get them all glued together, set something on them to hold them together. Um, you don't have to put a super heavy book or a whole ton ton of weight because you don't really want to squash your cardboard down. Um, you know, you just want the glue to get a chance to dry and hold it all together. But we're also going to put a liner on the inside and that will also hold it together. So, but go ahead and make sure that you get right around your edges here. If it squishes out to the inside, no big deal. It's not going to show unless you decide that you just want to leave it like this. But it's kind of nicer with a liner because you can see the cardboard and the edges of the envelope. Although sometimes people like to like leave things like that so that others can see what it was made out of. So you do that however, however you want to do. But you still need to make sure you get it good here. Because that's where you want it to hold together the best. Okay, so just got a few left. And we'll go through, we'll do them all because I want to show you how to do the top one when we get to that. And it doesn't take that long. And my hands are kind of filthy. We've been doing some gardening outside. And just like with crafting, I'm one of those that never really thinks to wear gloves, so... I've been fighting black hands because we've been digging in the dirt. I try and remember to wear gloves. My husband wears gloves. Of course, he works heavy construction, so, you know, he's used to wearing gloves. But he'll look at me and say, well, here's your gloves. Oh, I don't know. I forgot them. Just line it up as best as we can. There we go. And then this one. Now, I have to decide how to do this. How do I want to do this? I already did put a little bit of glue there with stick glue. Maybe I'll just do that with the rest of this too. No, it'll be easier to just put regular glue in there than to try and get the stick glue in there. So if you think about it with your top one, yeah, I was going to say you could try and put stick glue on it before you put it into, put stick glue on your cardboard before you put it in there. Oh my goodness, I've got fuzzies all over my paper clip. Um, but I think if you tried to put the glue on before you stuck the cardboard in the envelope, I am pretty sure that you'd have a hard time getting it in there. So this is probably going to be the easiest way to do it. Just get some glue on there, find a paper clip, a toothpick, just anything to, whoops, broke that off. Just anything to move it around. And it's only the top that you have to do. You don't have to do the bottom side. You just wanna get it all around the top, the top um, piece of paper of your envelope. Just give that a squish. I want to kind of make sure that I have it outside the cardboard. I don't want that cardboard sticking out. And that little bit of cardboard that's there is a very tiny piece. Alrighty. I 
here we go. So this top part is a little bit of it is going to be seen and a little bit of it will not be seen because next we are going to take our envelope that's going to go on top, decide where we want it. We're going to put glue a little bit here and across the top and then a little bit down this side. enough to come about to where the end of that flap is right there. So, yep, that's about right. And then we're just going to line this up. <clears throat> just so long as we have the hole covered, that's the only thing. It can be a little offset like this one is. I just offset it just a little touch you don't want to get close to the edges of that hole. You want to make sure that you keep it covered. So we're pressing across the top and we're pressing on the sides here. And then what we're going to do before we glue it down is open this up and cut off this envelope. Um, the, the flap of the envelope. Just like that. There we go. So now when we open it up, this one slid over a little bit. So I'm just going to move it over. There we go. And so there we go. Now we can glue this onto the rest of our stack and then let them sit and dry for a little bit. And then I'll be back and show you how to put a liner in it and it will be done. But these are very fun to make and you can make them as complicated or as simple as you want to make them. You don't have to do the stamps, you don't have to do the cancellation stamp, you don't have to put addresses. We want to make sure we flip this open so we line it up correctly. And depending on how big you want your opening, depends on what size envelopes you're going to probably want. And also, um, how deep you want your opening. That's how many envelopes you're going to want. And I think the cardboard works just great. But you can use whatever you have. Cardboard, newspaper, regular junk paper. The glue out of there and there we go that is our stack of envelopes now we're just going to let that dry i'm going to just put like just a light book on top of it here's the dictionary i'm just going to set that one there just something to kind of hold it together and give it a chance to dry and i will be back in just a little bit and we'll put the liner in it and it will be finished okay so i am back and the whole thing is been glued together and dried and so there's one thing that I realized when I was looking at um, my edges here and thinking about how did I do this one because I know I'm going to put an insert in here and my edges are not rough right here like they are right here and so what I realized I did with this top envelope I didn't stuff it and what I did was, here's my box, my inside corner. I cut it like this, like that. And then I folded those down, just like that, before I stuffed my insert box in there. So the top envelope, not the cover, this is the cover, but the very top envelope you need to actually cut corner to corner before you build your little insert box so that you can fold that down and you'll have this nice rounded edge on here. So, since I didn't do that and I have this very rough edge here, what I did was I just cut a piece of paper as big as the front of this envelope. So pretending that's the front of my envelope. 
I have to figure out which way it goes. Um, what I did was I put that piece of paper on there. I found my corners, which I'm definitely going to have to figure out how I did it. I should have marked it. That's not it. Okay, that's it right there. And then I found my corner. I took a pin. What I did was this was a solid piece of paper. I took a pin. I found the corner there. Poked a hole. Poked a hole. Poked a hole. Poked a hole. And then just went ahead and cut an X in there. That way I now have a piece that's going to cover. And it's going to look like it's the front of this envelope. And it's going to give me a nice edge as we round it over here. So we'll just go ahead and... I'll just use stick glue to, to glue it down on the edges here. So basically, this would have been the front cover of my envelope had I not cut this first envelope like I did. And again, that we're not talking about the cover, we're talking about the first envelope. That's going to fit on there just like that. Okay, so had I cut the front of this envelope, then I would just fold this down like that all the way around. And it just gives us a much nicer edge there. So there we go. Okay, then the next thing we need to do is build a box to put inside of here. So what I did was I just took a cereal box. First thing you do is you measure. Measure from the bottom to the edge of your envelope. And what I did was, okay, I have this little bit of extra on here. It doesn't start at the edge. So what I did was I just held it on there to see what my mark was. Now. As it is like this, the mark is right at two centimeters. But what I did was I kind of lifted it a bit because I wanted it a little deeper than that. So I saw like how far I could lift it and then put that in there and it wound up being two and a half centimeters. And so that is what I did was I just cut a strip, a strip of cereal box two and a half centimeters. And then I just started in one corner and just went down and found where the edge would be and folded it, came over and obviously folded it a few times to get it <laughs> to get the right measurement. And then I just folded it there, came to here and folded it there. And that is going to be the nice edge of my box like that. Okay, now I want to cover this because I don't want it to be a cereal box and I don't want it to be plain cardboard. So we're just going to do a quick, we will just go ahead and just line that up at the end. Put some glue on there. My paper is not quite long enough, so I'll just do two pieces of paper and overlap them a little bit. You could also do this with a piece of fabric. That's what I did with my other one. But I'm just going to do that. I'm going to fold this up like this. Just give it a really nice edge on it. Then grab a hold of it. I guess I could have put glue on the other side too, but I didn't, so I think if I did it again, I would. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm just going to cut it back.
and run the glue down there one more time. I'm going to do what's left here. Let's cut this off first. I don't want it to be, you know, too extra long or anything because um, I might as well do it the same way so it will, I'm going to put just a little bit extra on the other paper and I'm going to overlap it just a touch. Just want to overlap it a little bit. Just go like that. Watch it because I have glue on the other side, but I do want to go ahead and get some glue on that part. Just fold that over. Ah. And don't get frustrated with it. It is what it is. I got a little bit frustrated with, you know, like doing it wrong, but it's always fixable. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this off right here. glue on there like that okay now I'm gonna flip this up a little bit again and I am going to put a little bit of wet glue on the back of this paper that's going to touch all of those envelope cuts And I'm going to do this because this is going to kind of help hold everything together, especially since I am going to be lifting up the edges. I want them to kind of stay where I lift them to. I'm not pressing it real well, and I'm using a wet glue that does not grab right away because I do definitely want time to adjust it. So there we go, I've got some glue on all of that. Now I'm going to, which I should have done beforehand, was get this all bent up. I'm just gonna find my folds. So, there is my first fold, and had I glued this down, it would not wind up being wrinkly, but it is gonna be a little bit wrinkly now because I did not glue this side of my cardboard. Okay, so there we go. And that's going to go like that and fit right in there. Now, started originally in this top corner so I'm going to go ahead and put glue on here just like that whoops a little bit there too
fit that into there like that and then lift now you don't have to do this part if you want to measure it exactly how it is with them being you know as flat as they were just measure that and make it that size I just really wanted I just wanted it to be a little taller than where I had it and so you've got a little bit of leeway with the envelopes to be able to do that Lift it up. And line it up. And give it a good press. Now remember we put glue underneath the flap, so I'm now pressing those flaps up against the outside, which I didn't do originally because I wanted to make sure I got it to the right height before I pressed that all together. And that's also the reason I used the wet glue. So we've got that there. Do the same over here. Just press it up against the edge. Make sure that we're lifted. And I'm just kind of lifting on this envelope as I'm pressing and lining it up. Again, just lift up a little bit. And maybe I should have done one side at a time, glued one side at a time. You put the glue on there, got it lifted and pressed, and then you could fold these back like this, put glue on it, and do the next section in the next section. But we're doing okay with this. And we can always go with a toothpick or a pin or something and put a little more glue in there if we want to. If we don't want that separation there like that. I do want to put a little bit of glue where these two pieces come together. I'm going to go across the top a little bit too. And lift and squish. the other nice thing about having the cardboard inside the envelopes it does actually give you something actually quite firm to push against so there we go now that we've got those there we can now press the points down a little bit And there we go. So now we have our box. We just need to put a liner in the bottom. And do I have a piece that's more the right size? There we go. This is one of the envelopes that we cut off. And that's the perfect size. And I'm going to put that in with stick glue because I don't want it to get all wrinkly. So there we go. Now you can also like wad up a piece of newspaper um, and maybe wrap some paper towel around the wad and then just put that in there to hold that tight up against the edges until they dry, just to hold that tight over. And the reason I would put the paper towel in between the newspaper and the edges is so that um, the newsprint doesn't get on your paper. So if you had a dark paper, it wouldn't make any difference or a fabric wouldn't make any difference either because the newsprint wouldn't show up if it was dark. So, and there we go. That is our stack of envelopes that is actually a little treasure box. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I have fun making things like this. I love little bits of storage, like book storage and that type of thing that kind of looks different than what it really is. It's just kind of fun. And um, so I hope if you make one of these that you enjoy making it. So I had a good time making it, even though I had a few mistakes there. And there we go. As far as I'm concerned, it turned out perfect. We've got all our little stamps on there. We've got our return addresses on there. And if you wanted to, you could tie some string around it. Um, just like if you're going to give it as a gift so that when they untied the strings and they thought they were going to open the letters, they would find out that they're not letters. It's a little secret hidey place that you put a little gift in there. So I really do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much for stopping by, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.